Hi, hello. So yes, I'm Loic Menzies, um, and I actually um, went to school just across the road um, at Chesterton Community College. So this is kind of uh, my home turf. In fact, so much so that before this school was built here, this was the playing field for the school I went to. So I actually used to, some poor hapless PE teacher used to have to try and make me play rugby here. And it, looking at me, my stature, you can imagine this did not go so well. But if you'd come across the road or onto that rugby pitch and asked me back then what I thought the point of education was, I actually don't think my answer would be all that different to what it is today. But there have been a few modifications. So what I want to talk to you today about is exactly that. So what I thought the point of education was back then and what I think it is now. And so back then, as I stood on that rugby pitch, uh, kind of trying to avoid anyone's attention and kind of disappear a little bit, um, I was quite bored um, because actually what I cared about the most was I was fascinated, like so many young people, like those we heard today actually um, from the eco-parliament, I was really passionate about justice, equality, fairness, and my community. And we weren't getting that much of that, certainly not on the rugby pitch. Um, and so because of that, what I did instead was I got involved in the Cambridge City Council's youth participation projects. And so I used to inv uh, get involved in running loads of community projects and um, trying to help young people um, like myself to make a difference in their community. And I wasn't unusual in that because actually recent research shows that nearly half of young people every year get involved in youth social action and a quarter of them do that every month. So this is a live thing, and we've heard that today from the amazing young people who spoke here. Let's roll forward a few years. So um, a few years on from that, I just left university, so uh, yeah, five years on from there, so. Um, and I decided that I was still passionate about those things. I was still passionate about young people being able to write their own life story and shape their community. So what I did was I went off and became a head of citizenship in a school in Northwest London. And my belief then was that in order to write their own life story, in order to shape their community, young people needed the skills of critical deliberation and they needed to have all sorts of opportunities opened up to them. So every week I used to take my pupils to the old people's home down the road, I got them involved in debating clubs, we did model United Nations debating, and all of these things were what felt to me like the most important thing to be doing. I wasn't having to cover large swathes of curriculum because we didn't even have one in citizenship back then. Um, so I was just able to really develop my pupils' skills in these ways. A few years on, I moved on from that. Uh, so I left my role as head of citizenship and, um, and I set up the Centre for Education and Youth. Um, and I put a sign-up list outside so you can find out a bit more about us. That's us on that banner there. Um, so I set up the Centre for Education and Youth. And this is where my views were still kind of the same. There was a reason I set up the centre. It was, again, the idea that all young people should have those opportunities. But some of my ideas had started to evolve. So what ones were reinforced? Firstly, that young people, we needed to actually offer a menu of opportunities to young people so that they could really develop the passions and interests that they could furnish their lives with but you could really start to develop those things that you were passionate about, that you could have a vision for the life you wanted to live and you could pursue that. And I carried on doing, uh, looking into that. I did some research where we got data on uh, school residentials, 20,000 school residentials, and we analysed them to find out who was getting access to these potentially life-changing experiences. Like, how many of us think back to an experience like that at school when we went out into the outdoors or we stayed somewhere or went away with our friends and that kind of shaped things we wanted to be part of our life in the future. And we found that certain young people, those who were the poorest, were systematically disadvantaged in terms of getting access to those kind of opportunities. And that seems so unfair. So our work is partly about that, because I believe that the point of education is that we should level that playing field and we should offer that menu of opportunities to everyone. Now, which one's changed? Well. As I said, we didn't have a curriculum in citizenship when I was teaching, and I really believe that it was that debate and that discussion that was the most important. But as I started to read more and learn more, I started to question that a little bit. So I read, for example, um, an amazing book you should all read uh, called Why Don't Students Like Schools? Anyone here read that? Put your hand up if you read that. Okay, great book. And um, the author, Daniel Willingham, in it, um, he talks about... Um, 
about how critical thinking is founded on content, on knowledge. He talks about how um, expert chess players, the most creative chess players out there, those who are able to think critically about every move, have sometimes memorized, have tend to memorized 50,000 different chess moves. And he quotes a geologist, H.H. H. Reed, who says um, that the best geologist is the one who's seen the most rocks. So I started to question myself about this the, the critical deliberation bit and ask myself whether actually I'd done my pupils a bit of a disservice by not making sure I was furnishing them with, with the information they needed to participate in deliberation more critically. And a little anecdote might help it. Um, so um, I, had a, I had a favorite class. I know you're not supposed to have a favorite class, but I think quite a lot of teachers do. Um, and it was my year 11 sociology class. Um, and because it was for a GCSE in sociology, I had to bite the bullet and accept that there was a bit more of a syllabus to cover. Um, so I did that, and I remember one of my students called Paolo, and he, um, he got really into the section on direct democracy and referenda. You can see where this is going. He was really interested in this. We kind of talked about the advantages and disadvantages, direct democracy, the problems referenda can cause, and so on. Uh, and a few years back, you may remember, this became quite a pertinent topic in our society. And, and it was really lovely, because I got an email from Paolo, who was then at university, saying to me, thank you, sir, for the fact that you taught us about this topic, because now I understand what's going on here. And I thought to myself, wow, I'm really glad that I actually covered that, and that I taught you know, some, some serious information about that. But I also thought about other teachers I knew teaching citizenship who spent a lot more time looking at things like the process of legislation, about different branches of government, about constitution and stuff like that. And I thought all of that was a bit kind of tedious and boring and that um, I wanted to spend more time on the discussion rather than trying to learn that stuff. But I realized I'd done him a disservice to actually as the year, as time went on and we kind of got stuck in more and more of the ruts, um, he, he would have been able to navigate that and understand and criticise what was going on from much more of an informed perspective if I had done a little bit more of that stuff. So what I've started to evolve in my thinking is that actually critical deliberation and tackling some of these problems is not necessarily content-free. And I think what that shows to me is that sometimes when we think about the point of education and helping young people to write their life story, we think about the end point, but actually the process for getting there is so important too. And so if I was to go back across the road now to my 15-year-old self, I'd back myself. I'd say, yeah, you're right to be passionate about social justice and to be pursuing these things and to be planning a life working in these areas. But bear with it and keep your options open a bit more. Don't switch off in maths lessons that I really struggled with. Keep your options open because sometimes you don't know how useful something is going to be until you get a lot further down the line. And sometimes those foundations will pay off later on. So what I want to say today is that, yes, we've shared some strong beliefs about what the point of education is. And I believe that I was right to pursue those things. But let's also think about the process, not just the point.